Now, if you're an Excel VBA beginner, you're here watching videos on the channel, you may have seen our lottery file, which is just here. Now, recently I went into my emails, I dug out the first version of this file, which is from 2011. That's 10 years ago. And I was shocked. I was shocked by some of the Excel VBA coding. In this video, I'm going to tell you very quickly, short and sweet, about 10 ways my Excel VBA coding has improved in the past 10 years. It's 10 things that you can work on in your Excel VBA coding. But before we get started, let me tell you quickly about my Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out for you. The 13 formula, 21 techniques that you need to know. Also comes at the moment with the Excel formula trainer tool. There's now 500 formula in Excel, 500 formula. Our unique tool is going to help you learn them. It's absolutely free. The download link is in the video description. I'll see you there. Let's get into this one. As always, guys, the download files are available. And let's tick off our first one. Well, just pay attention to the new file and the old file. We can see both of them in the Project Explorer here. So the new file is at the top. The old file, which is the file that needs improvement, the one I did 10 years ago, that's at the bottom of here. Point one is about module names, module names. You can see back when I started Excel VBA, I didn't know that you can change the names of modules. These days, I always do that. Not only do I change the names, I then organize routines by function into those modules so they're easier to find. Common module names I use these days. Functionality for the main functions, as you can see here. Programmer for some of the routines that I'm just using for testing and they're not uh, you know, significant to the functioning of the file and a few others as well. So remember, we can name those modules and we can organize the, uh, the routines into modules to help us. A similar thing applies to variables. How often have you seen this uh, on the internet, an Excel VBA code that we see on the internet, dim X, Y, Z as integer. And this, this is how I was taught VBA. A lot of people were taught VBA like this, but let's go over to the new file and we'll be able to see how I name variables these days. Yes, these days we need informative name for variables. So the name of the variable describes its role. This variable, for example, is for counting, but there's more. I always advocate declaring each variable on a new line. That means we can include uh, an annotation to give us more explanation about exactly what this variable does. So informative module names, informative variable names. Let's go back to the old file. What's the next one here? Well, can you see if I were to ask you, what's the shape of this code? What do you think about the shape of this code? Well, you might say, Chris, there's not really any shapes of the code. You're absolutely right. There's a complete lack of indentation in this code. For example, here, we've got a do until construct within another do until construct that needs to be indented. And suddenly we've got a little bit more shape to the code that just helps us understand exactly what's going on. Let's compare to the new file, go to functionality, and I can see we've got some indentation here. We've got a loop within a loop. It doesn't need a huge amount of indentation, this routine, but I could go, you know, if I wanted to be a teacher's pair, I could go ahead and indent some of these. So indentation gives us shape to the code, helps us understand, highly recommended. What about annotations? Are you using annotations in your code? This is number four. Before I do anything in VBA, when I'm uh, creating a new macro, I write it all out. I write it all out in English, write it all out in my own language. And then pretty much every line of code these days comes with a comment, with an annotation. Even, even like where it's obvious what the line of code does for completeness to make it absolutely clear in my head, I always include those annotations. Let's compare to the old file. We've got no annotations. I couldn't find a single comment in this file. That means if you've got to come back to the file later, it's more difficult to understand. If your colleague or your customer's got to go into the VB editor, they're not going to be able to understand what's going on. So annotations, number five, let's go to the top of the old module. What's missing? What's missing here from the top of the module? Yes, we should have option explicit in here. Option explicit is going to pick up spelling mistakes in variables, amongst other things. It's going to save you a huge amount of time. And you'll know what I mean if you've ever had a variable that's misspelled by one letter. Let's con compare to functionality uh, in the new file. You can see we've got option explicit at the top. How can you turn on option explicit automatically? And thank you to the channel viewer who pointed this out to me. 
you can go to options editor and require variable declaration. That's going to put option explicit automatically at the top of your module. Number six here, referencing entire columns. Yes, in this routine at some point, I ask Excel to do something to a whole column, a whole column. How many cells is that? Well, there's about a million rows in Excel. We can go ahead, control and down arrow. You see 1,048,000 rows. So I've asked Excel to do something to 1 million cells. In this case, it doesn't make a big difference, but it could. And things get exponentially out of control when we're talking about this kind of thing. So can you dynamically define a range? And you can see in uh, the new file, we've got this input range, input range variable, and we do this dynamic definition. And then when we need to reference that range, we're using a dynamic range to do that. So try to avoid that, guys. Informally building as well. Try to avoid referencing whole uh, columns or whole rows. Not utilizing VBA functions such as RAND. So you can see in the new file here, I've used this RND VBA function. RND, what does that mean? Well, it's very similar to being in the worksheet and using the RAND formula. It's, it does exactly the same thing. And you can see in the old file, if we go uh, here for just a second, uh, you can see I'm actually typing in a RAND formula here. That ha does have some function that does kind of power the animation, but there's no need to do this. There's native functions in VBA that are going to be more efficient and things like left and right and mid, those text formally, I just use the versions in VBA. So what native functions can you use in VBA to speed things up? Let's can you not utilizing application.worksheet function. Are you using application.worksheet function in your VBA applications? Not absolutely necessary, but super powerful and super slick. Yes, we can access any worksheet formula pretty much from VBA just by putting it in VBA. Now that does complicate things a bit because it's more difficult to understand what's going on, but what it's gonna do is it's just gonna be faster. It's gonna really quicken things up. And we can see in the old file, it's gonna move across here. We can see we've got a VLOOKUP formula there in the file. In the new file, we've shifted that VLOOKUP formula into the VBA editor. That's quicker and slicker and smoother, not necessary, but a nice advanced application of Excel VBA. Number nine, asking VBA to activate sheets. Here we go. Sheets test dot activate. So when I got started with VBA, I asked VBA to activate sheets and then to do things on particular sheets. Now, this is an example of what we call direct referencing, direct referencing. So you have to be on a sheet for the code to work. Now, that's dangerous. We know that's dangerous because we can't guarantee a user's going to be on a particular sheet and sometimes VBA can get mixed up and go onto different sheets. These things do happen. So are you using uh, remote referencing, remote referencing in your code? So for example, we've got a with end with construct, which I also didn't use, used to use with end with. This just guarantees wherever we are in the file, this code is going to work. So we're referencing the sheet. That's an example of remote referencing. We're not clicking onto the sheet using VBA. And now number 10, a similar, um, a similar issue, which is to do with direct versus remote referencing. So you can see I'm actually selecting cells here, selection.value, and uh, somewhere here, I also select a cell. Um, there we go, range p25.select. Now that's to do with the animation in this case, but that's also a very beginner approach. It's a beginner approach to Excel VBA. We can do that remotely and let's go uh, for the final time, let's go over to our new file and you can see, uh, yeah, things like this, for example. Here, I'm not selecting a range, I'm defining a range here without selecting it. This is an example of remote referencing, more difficult, more difficult to code, but also much slicker, more powerful. So that's 10 ways, guys, 10 ways my Excel VBA code has improved in the last 10 years. Make sure you download the download, the download files, do these things, apply to you, let me know in the comments, where's your coding going to be 10 years from now? I've been thinking about the same thing. Go ahead, guys, download our Excel cheat sheet, 13 formally, 21 techniques that you need to know. Comes with our super cool Excel formula trainer tool. The link is in the uh, video description below. I will see you there. And the, the next video to watch is in the pinned comment below this video.